How's it going guys? Today, I wanna to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of shooting manual on your camera. Let's get started. Actually, I need to correct myself. There are no disadvantages to shooting manual. Let's get started. So first off, what do I mean by manual? Manual is the mode on your camera that allows you to adjust aperture, ISO, and shutter speed instead of letting your camera decide to, like it would be in auto mode. But you may be wondering, what's the advantage to having control over your ISO and aperture and shutter speed? To understand why there's an advantage, you have to understand what each of these settings do. First off, aperture is the size of the hole in your lens that's letting the light into the sensor. Now, the bigger this is, the more light it lets in, but it also adjusts your depth of field. The bigger the hole, the shallower the depth of field. Since you can control your depth of field, you can choose between a very professional look with a shallow depth of field, kind of like what I'm using right now, or for landscapes, uh, a higher aperture, so you have a, a much deeper depth of field so you can see more in your image. Changing the depth of field can really help you control what's in your photo and what's out of your photo. It can eliminate noisy items in the backgrounds of your image, whether you're shooting video or photo. If you were in auto, you wouldn't be able to adjust this. So this is one advantage to shooting manual. Shutter speed is the amount of time your shutter stays open and shows the sensor the image. The longer it's open, the more light gets into the sensor and so the brighter your image is, but also the blurrier your image is. Basically, anything that moves in front of the camera while the shutter is open is going to be blurred on the sensor. So for sports, you're gonna want a very high shutter speed. You only want it to be open for a little amount of time because you wanna freeze the action that's happening. However, for star photography or for long exposure, you're gonna to wanna to keep that shutter open longer to capture more light. Uh, in photography, motion blur is just in that one image. However, in video, uh, you know, being able to adjust your shutter speed controls the motion blur in the movement in the video. So that's something else to keep in mind. If it's too high, it'll be choppy and it won't look as natural. If it's too low, it'll be really blurry and it, it, it won't look good. So as you can imagine, this is another huge advantage to shooting manual. Being able to control motion blur is huge. So the third setting that manual allows you to control is ISO. Now ISO is the sensitivity of your camera sensor. And why would you wanna adjust this? Well, sometimes the image just isn't bright enough, so you have to bump up your ISO, bump up the sensitivity of that sensor so that it can pick up your image. At the same time, you gotta be really careful with ISO because if you go too high, you'll introduce grain and noise into your image and it'll just really not look professional and it, it just looks like garbage, honestly. It's horrible to work with. So being able to take advantage of these different effects that happen when you adjust different settings is huge in photography and videography. It just really lifts the ceiling on your creativity instead of just using a camera to take a picture of whatever's there. Now you can choose whether you want there to be a shallow depth of field or a, a very deep depth of field. You can choose how much motion blur you want. Maybe you're taking a picture of a stream and you want the stream to kind of flow in the picture and you want more motion blur. You can turn down your shutter speed. You know, uh, you're taking a picture of a landscape. You want a nice wide open depth of field so you can see everything and everything's beautiful. Uh, it really just lifts the ceiling on your creativity with your camera. And that's why it's so, so crucial that you learn to shoot manual. Now, I understand it's kind of hard just to flip your camera into manual and just start taking photos. Uh, it takes a lot of learning and it's very confusing at first because not only are you controlling you know, your depth of field, uh, your motion blur and the sensitivity of your sensor, you're also controlling your basic exposure which with each one of those settings. When you drop your aperture, there's gonna be more light coming in and it's gonna make your image brighter. So if you drop your aperture, all, all of a sudden everything's gonna be bright and you're gonna have to compensate with shutter speed or ISO. So whenever you adjust one, you're gonna have to adjust one or both of the others. So they all work hand in hand, but it's very complicated to learn right off the bat. 
So how can you get around this? Well, I would suggest learning in some of your camera's other modes. Most cameras have aperture priority and shutter priority. If you learn about the basic principles of motion blur and depth of field by using aperture priority and shutter priority, you can still get creative with your motion blur and your depth of field, but you're not learning everything at once. Once you get used to playing with these different settings and the effects that you can get with them, try flipping it into manual and try getting used to that. Try playing with it. And it'll take some practice, but once you get used to it, it'll be super natural for you to go and adjust a few settings real quick to get the exposure right and get the effect you want. And as you get better and better at shooting manual, your pictures are gonna look way better than an amateur's because amateurs shoot in auto. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you take these practices and apply them. Uh, if you need video work done, please email me at powellfilmmaking at gmail.com or just get in touch with me on direct messages or messenger. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.